I want to talk to you this morning about one of the hardest scriptures in the Bible to understand. And uh, some words of Jesus in uh, the Gospel of John chapter 6 that even caused his disciples to stumble and wonder and um, he explained it to them. And I think it's an important one for us to understand because it's the foundation uh, of what we believe in. And it's about living food and living drink. And Jesus started off this discussion with a, a, a crowd of people and scribes and Pharisees and the religious leaders around. And he said, I'm the bread that came down from heaven. I'm the living bread. I'm the bread that brings eternal life. The Jews looked back to Moses as the epitome of a great spiritual leader. And uh, they talked about Moses who gave them bread to eat in the desert. And Jesus said, Moses didn't give you that bread. My father in heaven is the one who gave you that bread. But Jesus said, as wonderful and as miraculous as that bread was, your ancestors, your forefathers ate that bread. They ate miracle bread. They saw the miracles of God and they still died. Because what God gave them was miraculous, but it was physical food. And he said, uh, they ate that natural bread and it was refreshing and life-giving uh, in a physical sense, but they're all dead and buried, they've, they've gone. And he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. And as opposed to those who ate physical bread and died, those who eat this bread that I bring down from heaven will have eternal life. And those who eat this bread, and the Greek words in there are those who eat this bread from him or of him will never die. Now Jesus gave the same words back in the Gospel of John chapter 3 when he said, you must be born again. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but have this everlasting life. Now in chapter 6, he's explaining how that is, is to eat that spiritual bread that came down from heaven. He said, because this bread gives zoe, which is an important Greek word, which means abundant life. Zoe is more than just human life. Zoe is abundant life, eternal life, spiritual life, and it has to do with the spirit, soul, and body living forever. And these people are having a great deal of trouble understanding what he was talking about. So he said, the bread that I'm giving, and the Greek word there has to do with the raised loaf, the bread. And how many of you have baked bread in your life? You ladies, you know that. You, you put yeast in it and you give it an amount of time and it raises. So he said, the loaf that I'm giving, the loaf that will be raising is my body. And how picturesque that it was his body that was raised from the dead. So he said, this rising loaf that I give, and it's for the life of the world, not just the 12 disciples, this is available to everybody. The life that I give is for the entire world. He's saying my body is the atoning sacrifice. In the Old Testament, the atoning sacrifice was a lamb. And there was a day of atonement and they would bring a physical lamb and its blood would be shed and its body would be burned as an atonement or the sacrifice that paid for the sins of the people. And Jesus is saying, my body is the atoning sacrifice. I am the Lamb of God, and it is my blood, and it is my body that will be burned in hell that is the atonement for your sins and for the sins of the world. My body is that atoning sacrifice. And the Jews were very angry. What does this man mean? Who does he think he is that we should have his body to eat? They were thinking in terms of cannibalism, which obviously is wrong. And, and Jesus was saying, no, I'm not talking about my physical body. Um, and then he gave him the central truth, really, of the Bible here. And it's an important one that I want us to understand before communion today in verse 53. 
Unless a man eats of this body of the Son of Man and drinks his blood, you do not have eternal life. You must eat this body and you must drink this blood or you will not have eternal life. So I want to be sure we understand that because it does sound like crude and, and, and a tough scripture to understand in order to have that eternal life. But Jesus went on to explain it, said that by eating and drinking from his body and from his blood, it gives you eternal life. And whoever does that, I will raise him up at the last day. Remember, it talks about Jesus being that raised loaf. And he said, and if you eat this bread, I will raise you up because my body is true food. Genuine food. My body is the real food, and my blood is true drink. So remember those two words, because they're important. True food, true drink. Jesus said, he that eats this bread shares eternal life with me. Eternal life is in Jesus. And Jesus said, whoever receives of me or eats of this has that same eternal life with me and with the Father. He said, he that eats this bread shares the same life with me and with the Father. And those that were in the temple said, this is crazy talk. This is hard to understand. This is unrealistic. And it says a whole lot of people left him that day because they couldn't understand those words. They didn't want to try and receive them. And they walked away. And they said, who can believe this? Who can accept this? Who could understand this? And so Jesus turned to his 12 disciples and he said, are you also going to go away? He said, what if you see me ascend into heaven? Would that convince you? Because Jesus knew the day was coming after his death and after his resurrection, that after walking on the earth for those 40 days, he would ascend into heaven. And they'd seen signs and miracles. They'd seen the loaves and the fishes multiplied. They'd seen the blind eyes open. They'd see, or they'd witnessed deaf ears open. And, and they saw a lot of miracles and Jesus said, the ultimate miracle, you're going to see me rise back and ascend into heaven to the Father. Would you believe then? And then Jesus explained that mystery to him. And here's one of the most important scriptures in all of the Bible. I'd really like you to remember this, because this is the key to understanding everything that God says to us. Jesus said, it's the Spirit that gives life. It's the Spirit that makes alive. It's the spirit in you that makes you an eternal being. The real you is the spirit that lives on the inside of you. We were created in God's image, and God is a spirit. He lived in heaven. He created us in his image and his likeness. And so he formed a body from the dust of the ground. Your physical body is not the real you. It's not the eternal you. It's the part of you that was made out of the dust of the earth. Now, it's a miracle that God could take carbon and calcium and other elements from the earth and make a body that lives and walks and talks. It's a miracle body, but it's only an earthly body. But the real you is the fact that after God formed that body from the dust of the ground, he breathed into Adam the spirit of life, and he became an eternal living soul. See, before God breathed life into him, Adam was just a statue uh, made out of dust, uh, stone, dirt, like any other statue made out of clay. But because God's spirit entered into him, he became an eternal living soul. It's the spirit that gives life. And so there's the key to understanding everything in the Bible. It's a spiritual truth. He said it's the spirit that gives life. It's the spirit that makes you alive. It's the spirit that gives you eternal. And the flesh profits nothing. How many hours a day do we spend taking care of our physical bodies? 
combing our hair, trimming your beard, um, putting on makeup, clothes, feeding the physical body, drinking. So much of what we do is taking care of our physical body. But it's not the real you, it's not the eternal you, it's only a temporary thing. If you're gonna live for a million years, these hundred or fifty that you spend in this body are what percent, Kennedy? You have to get your calculator out. Um, less than one percent. Man, it is so small. And yet we're focusing all of our energy on this tiny little thing that affects us for these few years in our life. The flesh profits nothing. In other words, no matter what our accomplishments are, no matter what our ambitions and, and dreams and activities are in this life, the flesh profits nothing. Because everything that we do to take care of this body has zero effect on eternity. That's what this verse is saying. The flesh profits you nothing compared to eternity. There's nothing we can do in a physical sense that prepares us for eternity. And then Jesus gives this foundational truth, and this is the key to understanding all scripture. The words that I speak are spiritual. Everything Jesus said in the gospels, everything that he's quoted in prophecy, number one, you have to look for a spiritual meaning, spiritual meaning. Now when he said, eat my flesh, drink my blood, immediately all of their ideas go to eat his physical body, drink his physical blood. But Jesus said, the words that I speak are spiritual. So what we're going to see is he's saying, unless you spiritually eat, receive my body, unless you spiritually drink and receive my blood, you will not have eternal life. Because the words that, are, that I speak, he said, are spiritual. And this is a key point number two, they have life in them. The words that I speak have life in them and they are life giving. Hebrews 4 has an amazing verse. It says the word of God is quick and powerful. Anybody know what the word quick means? Did you watch, anybody watch the movie The Quick and the Dead? What does quick and mean? Alive or life giving. See it's the opposite of dead. Quick is alive. And even more in the Greek, it means life giving. The words that I speak have life in them and they give life. One of my favorite hymns, we haven't sung it here very often, but I sang it a lot growing up. Sing them over again to me. Wonderful words of life. Words of life and beauty. Words that give us a sense of duty. Beautiful words, wonderful words words of life and beauty. See, it's the word of God that is alive. The word was alive, well, the Gospel of John starts out this way. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, the word was God, and the word became flesh and walked among us. So who's that talking about? Jesus. Jesus was in the beginning with the Father, only before he was Jesus. See, when he was born in Bethlehem, the angel said, you shall call his name Jesus. He will save his people from the sins. The name Jesus comes from the word Yeshua in the Hebrew, which means Savior. Call him Yeshua, he will save his people from his sins. Before that, he was in the beginning with the Father in heaven, but he was the Word. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, the Word was God, and the Word became flesh. Jesus is the Word, the living Word walking around in a human body. The real Jesus was not the physical body that was born in Bethlehem. <coughs> The eternal Jesus is not the Jesus that walked in Jerusalem and did miracles throughout Israel. The real Jesus is the spirit that lived with the Father in heaven from the very beginning. But he became flesh. 
And so here's the spirit, the word of God in a fleshly human body. The words that I speak are spiritual and they have life in them because that's who he is. How were the worlds created? By the word. By the word. Hebrews says, by the word, everything that we now see was created, came into existence. Jesus spoke it into existence. God said, let there be, and Jesus, that living word, brought things to pass through the power of the Holy, and direction of the Holy Spirit. That's how you and I get saved. The word became flesh, dwelt among us, paid the sacrifice for our sins, and we received the word, we received the word, and the word comes into our spirit and produces eternal life. Eternal life is in the Word. And as you believe and receive the Word, it's life-giving. It gives you eternal life. Even after a bunch had left, he looked at his own disciples and he said, some of you don't believe. <laughs> there were a lot of other people that had been following Jesus for years, watching the miracles and so on. And it says many of those disciples who had been following him, they went back and they stopped following because these sounded like crazy words. So Jesus took and learned, Jesus turned and looked to his 12 and he said, are you gonna go away? Are you gonna give up? Are you gonna walk away? Just because this is hard to understand? And here's the most amazing answer in all the Bible and it's our, the foundation of all of our confession of faith. Peter said, where else would we go? Where else would we go? You know, when we face struggles and struggles in this life, when we face things we don't understand, it, does that mean, okay, Lord, I don't get this, I don't understand this, so I'm going to forget it, I'm going to walk away. Where else would you go? Where else would you go? Peter said, Lord, we don't have any place to go. You alone, you alone, you are the only one, you by yourself. You are the only one in all of the universe who has the words of faith. You're the only one. You have the words of life. Peter caught a glimpse of it and he said, your words have life in them and you are the only one. We can listen to the president, we can listen to the candidates, we can listen to ambassadors, we can listen to the doctor and and there's some truth in a lot of people's words and there's a lot of hype in most of their words. But Jesus is the only one who has words that give eternal life. You alone are the one who have words of life. And Peter said this, we believe and we are sure, we have this confidence that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You know, there have been times in my life I don't understand what's happened by circumstances around me. I don't understand Sometimes I'm the one that's made the failure or fallen short and, and I've thought different times, where else would I go? Jesus alone is the one who has words of life. And I'm absolutely convinced that he's the Christ, the anointed one, the son of the living God. And these words that he spoke here in these chapter are the foundation of our communion, why we partake of communion. Unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you don't have eternal life in you. Because my body is true food, my blood is the true drink. Let me explain before we have our communion. Number one, Jesus' body is the true food, and he said it gives eternal life. Eternal life is in Jesus. Jesus said, the words that I speak are spiritual. So when Jesus said, my body is true food, and you have to eat my body, remember that he's talking about a spiritual event. The words that I speak are spiritual. So unless you spiritually eat my body, you don't have eternal life in you. Same thing he true he said about the blood. Jesus' blood is true drink and it gives eternal life. 
And unless you spiritually drink this blood and receive this blood, you cannot have spiritual cleansing. The words that I speak are spiritual. Let me ask you a question. What's the primary purpose of eating food? To nourish your body and your organs. Nourishment. The primary reason we need to eat food is that it renews our strength and it brings nourishment and it brings life into our body. The primary purpose of eating food is to sustain life in this physical body. And eating food is an act of your will. It's something that you choose to do. I've joked about this before. Uh, swallowing is an act of the will. Uh, if you don't believe that, try feeding strained peas or something to a little baby that doesn't want them. You know what they do? They'll spit it out. It comes right back out. And that happens a lot with the spiritual food that God provides through the Holy Spirit to people. They hear the gospel and, I don't want that, and they spit it out. See, whether you receive and believe God's word is an act of your will. Believing is an act of the will. I choose to believe the word of God. I choose to swallow. In fact, we use that phrase. If somebody tells you something you can't believe, we use the phrase, well, I'm not going to swallow that. See? Swallowing is an act of the will. And it's the same thing with believing. People say, I can't believe, I can't believe. No, you've chosen not to believe. Because believing is a choice. And if you'll make the choice to believe, the reality will come. But the first step to believing is choosing. Choosing to agree with God. The primary purpose of eating food is to get that nourishment on the inside of our body. And Jesus said, the words that I speak are spiritual. So what he's talking about is eating the word of God because it is spiritual food that nourishes your spirit. You know why the majority of people in the world are spiritually dead? They've never eaten spiritual food. One of the first things we want to do when a baby is born is get them to feed. Mother's milk, and then we go on to formula, cereal, yeah, and, and they grow. But the first thing you have to do for that child to mature and grow is that it has to receive food or it will die. And the same thing's true with the majority of people in the world. If they refuse the food, the spiritual food that God provides through his son Jesus, they're going to end up with eternal death. You have to feed the spirit on the inside with the word of God. What's the primary purpose of drinking? I looked it up this week. You know how many days you can go without drinking? Not very many. In some cases, it's only three days, seven days, ten days at the outside. Without water, the body dies. The primary purpose of drinking is to cleanse the body. You know one of the first things that happens, I, I read as, if you stop drinking, is that the blood thickens and the heart and, and the brain in conjunction slow down and shut down the blood flow to the organs and the organs stop functioning at full capacity as the body's in this starvation mode. And in particular, the two that often bring death are the shutdown of the kidneys and the liver. You know what the primary function of the kidneys and the liver is? Cleansing. Cleansing. To take out the poisons. <clears throat> Unless you drink, just take away the word blood. Unless you drink, you will die. That's true physically, and it's true spiritually. Unless you drink, and have the cleansing power of the blood will die in our sins. Unless you eat my words and drink and receive my blood, you will die. We know that's true physically. Eating and drinking are the essential elements of sustaining life. And the same thing's true spiritually. Drinking is an act of your will. There's water in this bottle. 
There's life-giving words in the Bible, the scriptures of God. Right now my mouth is really dry. From my medicine this morning for one thing and from talking and things. And uh, there's life-giving water in this bottle. And it would moisten my mouth. And it would make me feel a whole lot more refreshed uh, knowing that I have this water available to me. But it's not benefiting me at all. I can hold it. My mouth is still dry. I can look at it. My mouth is still dry. I can talk about it. My mouth is still dry. And the only way to get the benefits of this water is for me to drink it. Oh, that feels good going down. Jesus said, unless you drink my blood, it has no benefit for you. It's available. I give it for the life of the world. But we have to eat, receive his body, receive it into us, choose to swallow or believe it, and once it's down on the inside, it sustains life on the inside of us. And that's what communion is. It's a reminder of this very act. Eating, receiving the body of Christ on the inside of us. Drinking his blood, choosing to swallow it so that it can provide cleansing in our bodies. We've chosen to do it once a month here. I know some churches do it every week. I was in a church as a young boy where they did it once every three months. And the Bible doesn't really say, but Jesus said, as often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Because this is what it's about. A reminder of receiving Christ. A reminder of the cleansing power of his blood in our lives. Now that's something that we should do on a daily basis, not once a month or, or even once a week. Every day, Lord, thank you for coming into my life, being my savior. Lord, show me things in your word that will feed and cause me to grow spiritually. Lord, every day cleanse me by the blood and, and refresh me by your Holy Spirit. See, our faith, is an act of our will, just like swallowing. <clears throat> Believing, it's an act of your will. Drinking is an act of your will. Choosing to receive it. Because then that life-giving food and that life-cleansing power gets on the inside of us. And it gets down into our spirit, because the real you. How often do you take a shower, Keegan, to wash your body? Pretty much every day? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, once, once or twice a day. Once or twice a day. Okay. See, so many of us are so much more concerned about taking care of the physical body, which Jesus said profits nothing as far as eternity, than taking care of the spirit, which is going to live forever. Years ago, I heard somebody say this phrase. It's taken from a scripture. It, Paul wrote in Corinthians, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Make decisions based on spiritual choices rather than human and physical choices. And he put it in these words then to make it even more practical. Feed the spirit, starve the flesh. Feed the spirit, starve the flesh because if we would take something from God's word whether it's meditation or prayer or songs feed the spirit you build up and empower that spirit Jude has a scripture that says building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the spirit 
The same thing's true, walking in the Spirit, talking in the Spirit, worshiping in the Spirit, building up yourselves by listening to and emphasizing things that are spiritual. And so that's the reason we have communion, is to remind us of what Christ has done for us and to remind us of the choices that we've made. Last Sunday, Linda and I renewed the wedding vows that we made 50 years ago. You still mean what you said, hon? You said it 50 years ago? You said it last Sunday? Still mean it? Good. I take you, Jesus, to be my Lord and Savior, to have and to hold from this day forward, to love and cherish above all others good times, bad times, sickness and health. And I will be faithful to you throughout all of my life. That's what communion is about. Receiving his body, receiving his word. Jesus is the word in flesh. So when he says, eat my body, it's the same as eat my word, receive my word, swallow my words, get my words down on the inside of your spirit and that will give you a life. We're gonna celebrate communion together. He said, this is my body, which I give for you. And unless you eat my body, unless you receive my body, unless you take it on the inside of you, you don't have eternal life. The Bible says that on the night before he died, Jesus took bread. He looked at his 12 disciples and he said, this bread represents my body, which I'm going to give for you. Take it and eat it. Receiving Jesus Christ is a choice. Nobody gets buried by accident. You don't accidentally become a husband or a wife. It's a deliberate, willful choice. I chose to marry Linda to reserve, to receive her, to be my partner for the rest of our lives. And when you take this bread, you are saying, Jesus, I want you in my life. I want you to be my Savior and Lord for all of eternity. And Jesus offers this to the world. And 90 some percent say no, no, no. Jesus said, unless you receive my body, unless you receive my words on the inside of you, you cannot have eternal life. So by taking this bread today, you're agreeing with Peter and saying, Lord, I believe and I'm convinced, I'm sure that you are the Christ, the son of the living God. the spotless lamb that came into the world to pay the penalty for my sin. Jesus, come into my life. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we hold in our hands an emblem of the body of Jesus Christ, your son. But more importantly, that body was the dwelling place of almighty word of God, the living word who was in the heaven with the father, equal to the father, with God, he was God, and he became flesh and dwelt among us. And he offered this body on the cross as the atoning eternal sacrifice for our sin. And in spite of the billions in the world who say, no, I don't want it. Lord, I thank you for each one here today and around the world that says, yes, yes. I believe you are the son of God. I believe you died for my sin. And I receive you into my life as Savior and Lord. I will eat your flesh. I will receive your body. All who agree say, yes, I will. Amen.
as you swallow this bread, you are saying, Lord, come into my life. The other part of our lesson today, Jesus said, unless you drink my blood. Just take the first part of that sentence. Unless you drink, unless you drink of me, you won't have eternal life. The physical body can hardly go more than 10 days or it dies. The pollution builds up in the body. And without the soul cleansing blood of the lamb, our sins would build up and produce death in our bodies. We need the soul cleansing blood of the lamb every day, every day, every day. My wife tells me all the time, Jim, you need to drink more water, eight glasses a day or whatever they prescribe. Several times a day, we need cleansing every time we sin. Part of the problem is we wash our clothes more often than we wash our souls. And purity on the inside is a whole lot more important than what our clothes look like. And there's nothing but the blood that can cleanse us from sin and make us clean enough to stand in God's sight. And it's his robe of righteousness that gives us entrance into the kingdom of God. Unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot have eternal life. Father, we hold in our hands this emblem of the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. And it's his blood that washes away our sin. It's his blood that keeps us white and clean as snow. What could wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus, I thank you for your body that was given as the atoning sacrifice for our sin, your blood that was shed for our cleansing. Lord, let us receive it daily that we might be cleansed continuously. Thank you for the blood. We receive it, we drink it in faith, knowing, believing, convinced that you are the son of the living God, the lamb of God that would take away the sins of the world. Cleanse us by your blood, I pray, and all agree say, amen. Hallelujah. Lord, I thank you for this service. I thank you for the cleansing power, the blood of the lamb that cleanses us so that this body, the word, the life of Jesus Christ can live and dwell on the inside of us. Our bodies are the dwelling place of the spirit of almighty God. Let us keep it clean, a place worthy for you to inhabit, I pray. Go with us now and guide and direct us. I pray and ask it, we receive it in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior forever. Amen. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my sovereign die? Would he devote that sacred head for such a worm as I? At the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light, and the burden of my heart